an open letter to Kerouac. Dear T. Jean, I finally made it. I write these words in the town of your birth, the town where you eternally rest. I'd like to say I hitchhiked here, or rode a freight, or even did the dog, Greyhound. I think they were around when you were. But I came in under my own power, in that car I rented, so I can tool around the green roads of Vermont. Even my lodging feels a cop-out. I struggled with staying in one, in some flea bag digs closer to your spirit, but settled on a large, comfortable place, vivisected from the carcass of one of those old riverfront mills you successfully escaped lifetime employment in. Not only did this put me in the center of Lowell proper, but I figured you'd appreciate the Buddhist reincarnation slash Catholic resurrection mo motif. You'd hardly recognize Lowell, your birthplace duplex on Lupine is for rent. The, neighborhoods, the neighborhood seems neat, comfortable, no doubt a far cry from where you knew it in the Depression. In fact, all of Centralville seems a nice place to live. The native French speakers have either been assimilated or moved on. Spanish is the lingua franca now. In fact, St. Louis Church seems a misnomer. San Luis would be a better fit. The house where you lost Gerard has a nice, cheerful flag out front. A boy was playing nearby. He looked about nine. Pawtucketville today would make you feel lost. They've changed most of the street names. The tar sidewalks down by Moody Street Bridge have been replaced, and the textile lunch has gone through many hands. The 1971 photos in the Gifford book, and the ones 20 years later in Dorfner show different names, and it is different yet again today. The boards in the window tell me that no food has been made there in quite some time. And the balconies that frightened you so much are gone, as are the doors leading to them. At the other end of Moody Street Bridge, the place that scared, scarred you the most, uh, you when you saw the watermelon drop dead, now houses a fortune teller. The bridge itself moans when you drive over it. Spooky stuff even for an adult. The nearby stations of the cross and the grotto haven't changed at all. They look just as you described them in Dr. Sachs. And the Merrimack River beyond has the same power, the same beauty. I'm tempted to say like a woman, but then again, you always liked your women malleable, didn't you? Well, except for my male. I want to drink a beer to you, but the bar at the hotel is noisy. They're showing a Sox game on the TV, and the Yankees are winning a lot these days. There are a few things louder than a group of unhappy men. So I take my beer to my room and look out the window. The warehouses are slowly darkening red, and the old neon sign came over on the news, new, sorry, the newspaper, uh, sorry, the warehouses are slowly darkening red, and the old neon sign came on over the Sun newspaper building. It looks like it was probably there when you were writing for them. And the horizon is all aglow now, revealing only the old things, the steeples and the smokestacks that one, once gave this town life. It's morning now, Tijon. I walk the red downtown streets. It's a gorgeous day, the bricks growing plump and warm in the sun. I doubt you'd see much here that you recognize. The whole place is a maze of gentrification. Upscale shops are housed on a ground level of all the old factory lining the canals. Your fellaheen seem to have priced out, have been priced out. It's nice though, clean, spacious. One narrow path itself is a work of art. Sculptures grown from the grass, hang from the trees. Hand crank scroll poems along the Eastern Canal. Your own words hang from a bander above your old high school. The clock where you wrote about waiting for Maggie Cassidy still hangs out front, but the hands are frozen at a time that's no longer there. I walk the bricks, walk the bricks. I'm desperate for pancakes, but can't find any in the modern cafes. I'm about to give up, but then I spy Paradise Diner near the tracks. A stack and refillable coffee for four bucks. I cross the street to the Jack Kerouac Memorative, mem memori a memorative they've built for you to read your words off the, modern, the marble pillars. I sit in the middle of them, listening to the landscape crew BS about girls and last night's Sox game. Your words on black marble parallel the black ink tracing my own thoughts across Japanese washi.